Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with a special Kubernetes video. Uh, this one's actually not Kubernetes, it's something called K3S. Uh, let me bring up a page for it, k3s.io. It's something that uh, Rancher Labs has built that's a lightweight Kubernetes. They basically forked Kubernetes, stripped out a whole bunch of stuff, and then made it all one binary, which is sort of neat. It's Kubernetes, but it's also kube control. It's the API controller, It's one, but it's one binary. Um, and it's super simple and lightweight and exciting for Edge. Uh, Racken's doing a ton of work for multi-site management and Edge computing. And so uh, we're pretty excited to see this type of um, system come together. And, uh, you know, just like any, while well, it's really simple and lightweight, uh, and they have a nice uh, get k3s.io script, it's not really going to help you do a multi-site automated bring up because just like Kubernetes, when you install it, you have to install the server, you have to get a token, then you have to share the token with the other systems after they've been bootstrapped. And if you are familiar with what we've done for crib, which is our Kubernetes integrated, rebar integrated bootstrapping process, um, which I have some other videos on, I strongly recommend you, you look at them. It does a process where it bootstraps machines, it identifies an Alexa master, and then it runs through the process. Um, and so, what we wanted to do, what I wanted to do is, is take the crib process and then modify it, really streamline it to work for K3S. Um, and then I have one node. I know it, my cat's super excited about this, um, mostly because when I'm done with the video, he gets dinner. So you can understand the excitement. The idea here is uh, I have two servers cleverly named K3S and K4S. Um, I'm doing these in packet and I just reset them. And so I'll show you what this looks like and then we'll go through the process. This process is a lot faster um, than the Kubernetes process. So we'll, we'll have some fun, but I'm gonna take some time. So just like in Kubernetes, um, you have to define a cluster profile. Uh, this is mixed in with crib. So the variables that we generate for crib work for this too. The goal here was that we could actually inject uh, K3S in the middle of the crib processes, and because the APIs are the same, you should be able to get uh, both. I haven't done a lot of testing with this. This is really my first pass through. Um, but I don't need etcd. Crib, uh, K3S doesn't use etcd. It stores data in my SQL, uh, super lightweight, very hard to HA, um, but you know, that's what they wanted to do. So I just need to define the one cluster profile here, which is great, I've done that. I've assigned the machines. And then all I have to do is start my K3S cluster process running. And I'm actually gonna show you what the text of that looks like. So this is what that, um, the, the work, actually, hold on, that's, let me show you the workflow. The workflow for this, for K3S cluster, is <laughs> K3S config and then be done. So I need to show you what that stage looks like, K3S config. This is the text of the stage. Uh, it's gonna take some parameters. Uh, so we, I, we've built in a couple of defaults. These could be defined as parameters, but in this case, literally they're gonna come right in from the stage. And then it has three tasks, containerd install. So containerd is required. Uh, and we're just using the crib containerd install. So crib supports containerd or Docker. So we're just leveraging that. Um, and then crib get masters is the crib get masters, which elects a master um, into the cluster using that control process. And so we're just using that. So no new code. The only new thing in here is this uh, K3S controller code. And this is actually based on that, that script that I was showing you before, the couple of uh, rebar isms sort of baked in. Um, things like we have to inject the host name because we know the host machine and address, that's all handy. Um, and then we're basically gonna get the profile data that we have. We're going to download K3S, all good. Um, and then we're going to, depending on whether this was the master or the node, uh, run a different K3S server with the addresses. Um, and then there's a special component in here where it waits for this variable. So this uh, crib join parameter is actually the token that you need to run the agents. So server sets up, um, the agent sets up simultaneously, but one of them has to wait. All the agents wait, all the, sorry, the, the, yeah, the agents wait for the token to show up, and then they continue. Uh, so 
we'll get that. And there's a couple of things in here where we uh, have to collect some data, build it system D. It's really not that much code. Um, and this is very new code. So uh, don't, it's, it's gonna be tipped. There's gonna be a pull request that has to get taken. So look at look for my pull request if you're looking at this in July of 2019. In August, it'll probably be in the tip. And then when we do a release, it'll bubble into the release. Uh, but come in community ask if you're confused about what's going on. Boy, I've talked a long time without even saying go. So let's do this. So I have my two machines. I have them in the right profile. The profile only has that one value in it. And I'm in Sledgehammer. So um, this is designed right now for a live boot. It should work in pretty much any environment. I wanted to build a video and show this in Linode also. But, uh, and what I've, we've got going in here is we've already blown through um, our container deinstall, that was really quick. Let me show you the jobs log over here. Uh, so you can see we've gone through, uh, if you were watching while I was talking, you would have seen we, we did our container deinstall super fast, got the masters, and now I'm running the servers. Let me see which server ended up being my master server. There we go, this one is elected the master, so we can check on that. Um, and so it's downloading K3S, uh, it's, it knows that it's elected, uh, set the flag to yellow so that I would know that it was in process. All right, and it's gonna take a little while because there's some sleeps built into this uh, to let the system settle before we, we pull the tokens back. Uh, and what's going on right now is this machine, which is not the master, is, is still waiting for that token to show up, which is fine. Uh, and then this one is the master, but we're waiting for the sleeps to complete. Uh, there, they just finished. This just finished this task. We now have a Kubernetes cluster running there, and this machine was released because that, that data got injected back so it could finish. This is the exactly the pattern. If I add a new node, it's gonna just jump right in because that uh, join token is, is in place. So um, that's it. I have now built myself a K3S cluster. Uh, just like crib, um, one of the things we've done is we, we generate the kube ADM file in this case. It knows the IP address of the machine, so I'm gonna take this file and download it. That's all good. Jump over to my downloads directory. And if you watch my Kubernetes video, this is exactly what I did before. So now I have uh, that same admin comp file. Ooh, it looks really ugly. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the kubectl. This is using real kubectl. Uh, kubeconfig admin get nodes. And you can see these are the two nodes that I just built. If I wanted to do this with K3S, do I have K3S in here? Uh, it's not where I installed it. Maybe it is. There we go. I do have K3S on my local system. And so instead of this, I can do a K3S kubectl, exactly the same command, get exactly the same result. That's how K3S works. It took all of the binary executables and put them under the K3S group with these uh, additional uh, CLI redirections. So, wow, look at that. Uh, it took just a couple of seconds to actually do the full install. If I jump back into machines and check out this workflow, uh, let's see, we should be able to check out, yep, there we go. Here's some timing of uh, the actual runs. You can see my development tests uh, as I was going through the process of trying to get them to work. Uh, I don't think I ran it that much, but obviously I did. Uh, and so what you'll see is that we actually have, uh, this is the completed runs of my last couple runs once I got everything working. Um, and it's about a minute, looks like, to get this stuff going. Crazy. Uh, so yeah, you can have a little Kubernetes cluster running in little environments, running in just a minute or two, uh, download a couple components. Um, once again, this is new. I, I, I pulled this together because I wanted to play with uh, K3S and prove that it worked and see how it goes. Uh, but if you're running Digital Rebar, this should be pretty straightforward to click a couple of buttons and go. Um, I just showed you the majority of the code on screen. Um, love to have you playing with it. Let us know what you think. Um, and you can follow us. Just go to rackend.com and join our Slack community. I'm looking forward to hearing from you and hearing about your experience.